Hey everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com. It's a little bit before 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, August 18th, 2013. A lot of times I like to wait and see what the futures might shed on things, but I'm not going to worry about that today. We're just going to look at the chart because really that's what this is all about. And if the chart is right, futures will follow. Um, before we take a look at what happened on Friday the 16th, and also looking back on the week in, in general, I need to remind you that the website and the video are for educational purposes only and nothing stated at the site or in the video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's see if any of this makes sense. Well, coming into the week, we uh, were looking at a couple of trend lines, one being this lower trend line that I'm highlighting that, if broken, would make the last month approximately a little bit longer, but basically make the last month into a sort of head and shoulders top. It's not a perfect pattern because we didn't get a whole bunch of we didn't really get the same symmetry on the right side as we got on the left side, but it doesn't matter. We still had a, a, a support line that was there, and we still had a pretty uh, decent amount of a head and shoulders kind of a shape that took place to the north side of this trend line. Additionally, we had a, a flat line at about 1700 that the S&P got over for three days, but then just gave it up. Just said, no, nah, we don't belong here. Not yet. And for that reason, um, <coughs> this three-day period above this line, which, by the way, never got anywhere really close to being a technically significant amount over this line, the highest we got was uh, about, come on, where's my little thing? The highest we got was about 1709, maybe close to 1710. And really for it to be technically significant, we would be looking for something more like 1717. Because that would be 1% over that 1700 level. Never got there. However, uh, we did on Thursday break down from this uh, pattern and we had a target once this pattern broke down. And where do we get the target? Well, I remind you, we measure the height of the pattern from the neckline and wherever it breaks down, we expect a move equal to that height to the other side of the line. That's true whether it's an inverted head and shoulders or it's a head and shoulders top. So I'm cleaning up some lines by the way. There's some there's a few things that I'm that I'm just getting rid of because they're uh if we got to revisit them we will. I can redraw them later, but for right now just to tidy this thing up a little bit. Um we were talking about the possibility uh, if we break to the downside, that we would see support at about 1654, 1655. And that's based upon a couple of things. First off, it's based upon the fact that 1654 approximately is the minimum target from our head and shoulders top. So we know to be looking for that. Um, I thought maybe, well, we'll take a little bit closer look. Um, so 1654 is a minimum target. Now, why would there be a such a thing as a minimum target? Well, the reason is, is that from the many, many years, decades, or centuries where people studied these stock charts, they found that it's not unusual 
for a pattern to develop pointing <coughs> to a level and that's the level where it stops and then it starts to head back up and we've seen this many times we also know however that a minimum target doesn't mean it's done it means that's what you would expect as a minimum but often the minimum also ends up being what you get and no more okay so there's a couple reasons to expect support in the mid 1650s and again one of them is is because when you get there you can't necessarily expect more downside because of the pattern but the other reason is the fact that we had this gap up of roughly 16 17 points or 15 60 it's hard for me to tell exactly how much it was yeah 15 16 point <coughs> gap up on July 11th I'm not a believer that gaps have to be filled but the fact of the matter is they often are and I think one of the things that lends to the general consensus that's slightly mistaken that gaps have to be filled is the fact that when they are filled that tends to lead to reversal that is true if you have a gap down in a stock it, it, and the gap takes you from 50 down to 40 and you gap on the open down to 40 when it gets back to 50 the, you're going to meet some overhead resistance there because the people that woke up to a 20% loss at 40 are going to be glad to get out even so that's why you would have gap resistance likewise when you have a a resistance level that gets gapped up over when the uh, a price level returns to that gap level there's a tendency for it to find support there it's not that this gap pulls the S&P back down what it is is that when the S&P enters that area you do tend to get a bounce so that's another reason to expect a that's one more reason to be on the lookout for a bounce in the mid 1650s is because we had that gap just a little bit more than a month ago that took place now if we look at things on a five minute chart it's pretty it's really a pretty nice little uh, thing that we've seen developing after the initial breakdown we started to trade up a little bit but then started to slide downwards <clears throat> um, usually if you're gonna see a lot more downside it is more typical for a gap <coughs> to then result in a move slightly upwards over time creating a bear flag but this one is sloping down so coming into Monday the 19th it would not surprise me one bit for Monday to open at or to <clears throat> pretty quickly get over this line signaling that we have found some support here and I say that because of the shape of the line now this is not a guarantee nothing in a chart is a guarantee but had we had this same shape let me rephrase that instead of sloping slightly downwards had we been sloping slightly upwards then I would have a more bearish outlook than what I have as we look at things today 
In other words, this looks like we may have a case of a move down and then a, um, a slow, slightly downward consolidation that I would be on the lookout. We still have two lines to be, to be mindful of, mind you. But the good news is they're very close to each other. So let's just suffice it to say this. If we break out over this top line on Monday the 19th, then I would expect a move back up to test the 1680s and to even test this neckline up around 1686. If, on the other hand, we break down underneath the 16 mid-1650s and get down to 1650, <clears throat> Or even if we were to take out this line down here that I'm highlighting, then I'm thinking the 1620s look to be pretty much in order. But because of the shape of this, I've got my eye towards a breakout out of this little pattern to the upside and a test of the 1680s. But again, we, we won't be able to know that until we get that break of this top line. So if we break this top line with a little gusto, then I'm thinking we head on up and test this neckline area again in the, uh, in the, <clears throat> in the mid 1680s. If we break this 1654 line, then this is just kind of more sideways action that, that could be serving as, as a misshapen bear flag, if you will with a move down to the 1620s. So what we've got is this line and this line. Whichever one goes, we're probably looking for a move of approximately 20 to 25 points. So if 1660 goes, or if this line goes sometime on Monday, then we're looking at tw actually probably more like 25 to 30 points. On a reversal, if this line goes, then we're probably looking for 25 to 30 more points down <clears throat> on continued selling. So these two little lines right here coming into Monday are probably fairly important. But if I, if I just had to make a small bet right now, I would say look for this one to go because of the gap support and because now our little head and shoulders top has met its minimum target with uh, that uh, little uh, afternoon selling pressure we saw on last Friday. As, as far as looking at the week, guys, we came into the week expecting either this line to break or this line to break. Not knowing, at least I didn't know which one it was going to be. If it was the top one, then I was looking for a move into the 1720s. If it was the bottom one, then we were looking for a move into the mid-1650s. On Thursday, it was the bottom one. We got the 1650s. So I count that as the chart playing out as we would expect it to. But, sadly, not knowing whether it was going to be up or down until it did its thing. So the chart played out, but I didn't really honestly have a clear sense of is it going to move to the upside or to the downside. If we'd gotten over 1700, then the 1720s were certainly, uh, I think, our target. But having broken through this line uh, at around 1684, then we knew 1650s, 1654, 55. That was going to be our target. and That was met <clears throat> on Friday. Now let's see coming into this week. Do we continue the selling or do we get gap support? Does this little sideways to down action tell us that the market just needed to absorb a little bit more selling pressure after that initial move down and now having met that gap support area, are we going to rebound and head up to the 1680s? We need to be prepared for either one of these. I think 
to my eye, it looks a little bit more likely that we get the upside move. So I'll stick my neck out and say um, I would kind of expect a breakout over this resistance line. We had two days of good solid selling pressure. Did not break this this um, this line at 1654. And what is that by by <clears throat> by the way? <clears throat> That was what we were at one point considering as a neckline to an inverted head and shoulders that never made a right shoulder. So the question is, will this still serve as support? It will be interesting to see. So let's uh, just keep an eye on those things coming into the week of uh, August 19th. Hey guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for bearing with these little jukes and jives that the market has been throwing us. Let's see what this week brings our way. Take care.